obviously studied a lot about fair trade before coming out to Bangladesh and knew a little about people trees work, but what was it different to how you expected it? I just think it's really hard for people to imagine what it's really like. I, I think even reading about it, uh, knowing about it, hearing about it from you, um, seeing it in reality is, is just so different. Um, it's just amazing how kind of simple all the techniques are, but how they create such beautiful items of clothing that you know are able to compete with, with clothing that's made in a factory or by a computer. It's just, I don't know, I just, it kind of amazes me. So there's lots of different craft elements here yeah. um, that, that kind of you know, turn the model, the fashion production model, on its head, as it were, in that we're groups like Swallows are working you know, to employ the maximum number of women so that they can support their families and you know, build a really healthy community. And so I guess you've, you've seen all those different processes of, of actually creating you know, the yarn in the first place so that yeah. then it can be dyed and then it can be hand woven and then yeah. hand, hand tailored and hand embroidered. Yeah, I've never seen anything like this before and it's just amazing all the different stages that you have to go through and they do I mean it's just really hard to impress upon people like handmade and what that really means, you know getting the yarn, dyeing the yarn by hand, then getting it onto a loom, to then get it to then make the piece of material, to then cut it, to then sew it, to then embroider it. It's just so hard for people to imagine you know, all of that and what it takes to, to create something and then how special that item of clothing is. What would, you, what would you say to people who'd say, well, come on, you know, we're, you know, here we are in the 21st century and, you know, what is the point? What's the point of all of this really labour-intensive stuff? You know, why make it by hand in a day? Because I went... I went to the slums in Dhaka and I saw what the conditions like are for people who work in these factories and and buy this different model and it's just horrible. It's, it's, um, it's just the most horrible thing I've ever seen. Um, it just that, I don't know, I just don't think that's a sustainable business model or way to carry on working with the developing world. And, you know, that, that income to make these garments is, is I don't know what you said, the, the GDP for Bangladesh in terms of the, the garments it makes, it's just huge, it's like 70 or 80 percent of what that country earns. And so, you know, making it in a sustainable way that will just give them, a, you know, some kind of a decent life is, um, is de it just definitely the way forward really. The girl who showed me how to use the sewing machine is 18 years old, she's two years younger than I am. And um, that kind of, I don't know, that really hit at home for me. I was like, she's younger than I am and she said she was studying as well as earning a living here and, you know, trying to make a life for herself out of so little opportunities. It's kind of, um, I can imagine actually having a, you know, a room, you know, or a production centre like this and, and coming to work every day and having my children in a nice daycare centre and then going off to school. Mm. Whereas I really, really can't imagine how I would have, you know, the mental ability and strength to actually go into a factory from a slum every day and have my children living, you Somewhere know, else. 600 miles away, you know. We interviewed that, that woman um, living in living in a slum in Dhaka and she was just very honest about the fact that there just wasn't any hope for her. There is no hope for people living in those kind of conditions and being paid that kind of a wage. There is no way out of that kind of poverty. And um, I don't know, just seeing this is just so such a relief. I have to say I was that's the, that's the word to describe arriving at Swallows and, and seeing what it's like here because if I'd had to continue in the kind of conditions that we were in Dhaka, I don't know if I would have been able to have done it even just to be here for a few days, you know, I was, it was really hard. So 
coming here and seeing, oh my God, thank God, there's more time to live. Thank God, um, you know, that they're living, I mean, it's so modest, but at least it's clean and at least, you know, they have a community and their families are together and they seem to love what they're doing and they're proud of what they're doing and they're empowered and they're learning and they can send their children to school and they can help their own way out of out of their country's poverty. You know, you've you've come out here, you're twenty, you've you know, obviously your friends are you know different levels of awareness. What what kind of message would you want to bring back to them to and to the general public, I mean, to, to people your age, to to try to, I don't know, I mean, you can't bring everyone here, can you? No, what that, would you that, do? How would you? I was talking about it yesterday, like, I, I don't know how to impress upon people or get them to understand, understand, it's so hard to, to get people to care and, and get people to, to realise what a huge difference it can make to someone's life. And, it's funny, you know, like people are happy to to donate money. You know, they'll watch Comic Relief once a year, and they'll and they'll see they'll see what the rest of the world looks like when they're not living in countries in the developed world, when they're not living in England or in America or whatever. And they'll go, Oh God, that's terrible! I must do something. I'll I'll give some money. And but that I don't know, charity as wonderful as charity is, that money runs out. It's it's not sustainable. It mm. it only lasts a certain period of time and then it's gone and they need more and they need what what I really think people need is, is opportunities to help themselves and that's what they really want is to be able to work. When we were talking to the women yesterday, I said, What's your hope for the future? Do you want a radio? Do you want do you want what do you want for yourselves? And all they could answer was they said, We just want more work. We just want this to be bigger. We just want more women to be involved. They want everyone to benefit. And I just thought that was incredible that you know, they all want to help themselves and they, they're so proud of their country and so proud to be Bangladeshi and they're so proud of what they're able to do and make and what they've learned and it just and, needs to get bigger. And so for it to get bigger, what needs to happen there is for people to, every time they buy something, to, to buy it in a way that's, you know, just if, people at, at have, just if people have the opportunity, if you see something fair trade, buy it. It just makes all the difference. The contrast between this and the con and and Dhaka, where we were before, is just incomparable. And it's and sometimes the difference between something that's fair trade and not fair trade can be pennies difference, like tiny, tiny amounts difference. And if you do care, if you do have a conscience, if you do want to help. Just making those small choices every time you see that kind of an option in front of you, it just, it just makes such a big difference. <laughs> People my age are just so trend orientated, and this idea that you know a trend turns around in like two or three months and there'll be a new thing that they want, and then they'll dispose of what they had before. And I think what my personal style is really about is that I'm not. I'm not super trend orientated. I wear what suits me and what I think is beautiful and quite simple and classic and people just have to value value what they own. You know if you buy something from here, it's come from a really special place. It's handmade, it's gorgeous. I designed it, if you care. Um, and you know, you're, the quality is so different, you can keep it forever, and it will always be special, and, you know, and if you buy something, you know, if you buy something that's made for two quid, yeah, it's going to fall apart in the wash, and it's going to look, it's going to look terrible after you wear it three times, and this stuff won't, um, this stuff just won't, because it's made beautifully, it's made with love, and care, and pride, and, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs>